Toastmaster we all know about, the biggest enthusiast I know, and he will be giving his speech about Get It Done. He's on, Zane is doing his uh, Toastmaster, Distinguished Toastmaster program, and he will talk uh, about the things, of course, related to Toastmasters, but it, was, it will be his own learning uh, about what he did uh, during his career in Toastmasters. So with this, please welcome Zane Albidi with his speech Get Things Done. Get it done. Get it done, Zane Albidi. As Agatha just mentioned, I am very passionate, enthusiastic Toastmaster. So quite often it happens, I meet other people and they see my activity and they come to me and they say, Zan, do you have any life at all? Because all you do is Toastmasters, all the time. Do you even work? Do you have a job? How do you earn money? Well, for you, of course, you know that I work in Nokia, otherwise I wouldn't be here, so I do have a job. But what I do is I'm a product manager. What is a product manager? Not many people understand. But one very important factor about this job is that you have to get things done while nobody is listening to you. Because you are not a line manager, so you cannot tell someone, do this, otherwise you will not get any salary. You are not a project manager who can just escalate things to the line. No, nothing like that works. Most often, as a product manager, you have to convince people that are usually at the same level as you, or even sometimes higher. Very few times you have to talk to people that are maybe just engineers. Hard job. How do you convince people when you don't have any strong incentive? You cannot offer them any money. You cannot threaten them by getting them fired or escalating them. So how do you do that? Well, let's come back to Toastmasters. Now, how is it in Toastmasters? You can become a president of the club, but can you tell your members to do this and not that? Forget about it. They will not do it. They have other things to do in their life. They actually have a life. <laughs> yeah, they have to work, they have family, they have other things, so you cannot just tell them, come and to the meeting and do this. The same, any time, any leadership role that you take in Toastmasters, you cannot give the two strong motivators that we have in life generally, in corporate world at least, the money or the threat of getting fired. They don't exist in Toastmasters. Now I have been in Toastmasters for almost two and a half years, and most of that time I was in some kind of leadership role in the club or even higher. Right now I'm the area director and helping all the clubs in Wrocław and Opole, which is nine clubs. And during this time I have learned few things on how to get things done even when you cannot offer any money or you cannot kick somebody's ass like Yalik can. <laughs> so how do you do it? Well, there are a lot of things and I will not go into too much detail about all the topics, but I would like to highlight three things that I have found to be extremely important when you are working with a team and you want to get things done without having the usual motivators. So what are those? The first one is what I call react. Now, this happened about one year ago. Right around this time, I was organizing a big conference in Wrocław. It was in middle of April last year. It had about 115 participants coming from all over Poland and even from other countries in Europe. A lot of speakers, two days full of agenda and a lot of sleepless night for me. And I had a core team of seven people that I had to work for months with them. And they are doing their own thing, you know. They're all working professionals, some entrepreneurs, and one of them, my girlfriend. It's very hard to convince them to do anything about Toastmasters when they have tons of other things to go do as well. I would like to give you an example of two such people that were in my team. The first one, his name is Kamil Kamil. He is also a very passionate Toastmaster. One day we were at a party of some friend, a birthday party, and we talked about the concept of what I want to do. And he got excited. He said, okay, Zan, I want to help you, and I want to help you in this way. I said, perfect, sounds good. You, you do this, I, I'm very happy to have you on the team. And the thing is, Kamil is a very diligent person. So when he says he will do something, he will do that. And for the next four months, I never had to ask him, how is the progress, how are things going? I, I did, of course, ask, but I, I knew that it is all on track, and he's doing the best he can. In fact, I feel like if I would have asked him too much, he would have been demotivated. So it was a conscious effort on my part not to bother him too much and let him do his thing. 
and it worked out perfectly. So much so that he still calls me the greatest leader in the world just because I didn't ask him every other day how things are going. <laughs> At the same time, there is another person, his name is Stan, and he's an entrepreneur. So he was working as a social media expert and content creator for a long time and at around exactly this time he was about to start his own company so you know starting a company is not that easy he had a lot of other things going on at the same time but somehow i managed to convince him to help me with all the marketing of the company now stan is a bit different he has at a given moment 100 different projects ongoing and he says yes to everything and then he struggles with time with sleepless night working 24 hours straight that's the kind of person he is and during all of this, he forgets things. So quite often it would happen. We would sit together, we would discuss the whole strategy, and two days later I would ask him and he would forget half of it. Now how do you work with that kind of guy? Of course he's very talented and he knows what he's doing when he remembers <laughs> that he has to do it. So how do you work with that person? Well, I had to adjust my style to keep talking to him all the time, to keep reminding him why we are doing it and what we are doing it and what we hope to achieve with this. And the more I talked with him and the more we stayed in touch, the easier it was for him to remember things and to get it done. It gave me a lot of stress myself because it took longer and much more effort on my part, but the result was absolutely amazing. Now two different kind of people who I had to manage in a different way, but the result was the conference was a huge success which is still remembered by a lot of Toastmasters in other cities as well as in Frotsfall. Now how did I do it? I reacted differently to how they behaved. I identified their communication and working style because I knew them. I knew them before, I knew how they work, and as a result I was able to adjust my behavior in order to get the results that I want for the conference. So that's the first lesson I learned, and it is very common, you have to do it in professional life, in personal life. The second one, the second R is, any guesses? Recognize. Recognition is a great, great motivator. This is about two years ago. I had just joined the club and soon after I became the VP education of the club. We don't have the one Mihao today here who is the current VP education, but if you are VP education, the first problem that appears to you is, you ask a member, I'm giving you a speaking slot in the next meeting, please give a speech. And they would say, ah, oh, no, I don't have time. I don't know the topic. I need more time to prepare. I don't even know what to talk about, I'm so stressed. They will come up with 100 different excuses not to do something, and this is a very common problem. Well, there are a lot of answers to that, but a slow way of motivating such people is to recognize them all the time. And that's what I started to do. Every time I would notice a member doing a small thing, for example, just coming to the meeting, I would recognize it. If they would take a role even as small as just timer, for example, showing the card, which does not require you to speak that much on the stage, I would still recognize it that today he did a great job and he was the timer and he kept the meeting on track and so on and on and on. The same way I kept continuing and kept motivating those people until the moment they were able to come on stage and give a speech and then continue giving speeches. Now the thing is, when you have a title next to your name, like I had as VP Education, your words somehow automatically mean more. As a member, I was doing the same. When I was just a member and I would go to Vukish and say, Vukish, today your table topics performance was great, he would say, yeah, thank you. When I was the VP education and I would go to Vukish and he, not Vukish, but he's just an example. I would say to Vukish, yeah, your table topics performance was today great, he would have this huge smile on his face. Later on, I became president and I tried the exact same thing and I would go to Vukish and say, you did a good table topics and he would be over the moon. <laughs> That's how recognition works. And when you are in a place of um, title, you have a title next to your name, like I have, for example, product manager in my current job, even though I don't directly manage people, when I, I recognize someone, they do feel much more recognition than it would be if they were just from a regular peer. So that's the second thing, recognize. What is the last thing? Be respected. That's true, but uh, <laughs> something else. It's obvious. <laughs> <laughs> relationship you cannot do the first two things until you build relationship and the most recent example in my case of that is when I became the area director I'm probably the first area director in Poland who is not actually Polish and who doesn't know Polish at all 
Now in my area, I have five clubs that are pure Polish speaking clubs. I have one German that I don't understand, one Ukrainian which I don't understand. I have only two English clubs, which is this one and the one that I go in the evenings. But at the same time, I still became area director. So what I had to do, I had to go to those meetings and I have to sit there for two hours where I don't understand anything, which is not so nice. But more importantly, I had to build relationship with the presidents, because that's my job. I have to build relationship with the presidents of all the clubs so I can help them to run the clubs in the best possible way. And if they need help, they should come to me. Well, it was a hard task, and right around the beginning of my term last year in summer, somebody told me then, just go and visit them. So even before I became area director, I was already announced, but I, my term had not yet started. I started in visiting those clubs. And all I would do there would just sit there in the back and do absolutely nothing. At the end of the meeting, I would say, hi, my name is Zan. I will be your future area director. If you need anything, just let me know. That's it. I would go home. Fine. One month later, I would go again. I would talk more. But this time, they already know me a bit, so the conversation could be a bit more. So how is the club going? Do you have any specific problem that you're dealing with that you think I could help? And so on. And slowly, 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 after nine months of doing this, finally I can say that I know all the presidents and their teams very well, and we can communicate and build a relationship. And finally I can get things done from them. If I would not have done this and I would tell them do this, they would ignore me completely. Now when I say something to them that maybe this is the way you can improve your club, they actually listen because now we have built a relationship over nine months. Even though they know that I don't understand any Polish, I still come to their meetings and just listen, just because I want to support them. So these are the three aspects that, in my opinion, can help you manage teams and motivate them and get things done. React to their personal way of working, recognize them at every possible opportunity, but before doing all of that, build relationship with your teams, personal relationship where they know that you care what they are doing.